Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, <laughs> the Comics Jones. Today is March 14th, 2021, and this is episode 232. We're looking at Homesick Pilots today, issue four from Image at a whopping $3.99. And we get this way out wild cover here. And I believe this is Amy on the cover, but I'm not sure because... <laughs> Most of the characters on in here have kind of longish hair. Um, as we can see a number of kind of nightmarish um, images. And for some reason they have this uh, radioactive symbol here. And I'm not sure what that's all about. But maybe we'll find out something about that in upcoming issues. Because it does lead off the first page with something. But let's talk about who worked on this first. Uh, we've got Dan Waters, the writer. Casper Wingegard as the artist with Adit boy Aditya Bidika as the letterer and Tom Mullen as the the designer I'm not sure what all these other ones Erica Schnatz as the production artist and Tara Ferguson white noise marketing so I guess they're just kind of behind the scenes type people but this time we try, we start off with this big grid of it seems to be some kind of almost like video screens that you could walk across. I'm not sure how this is going to lead into the story so much, but you can see one guy is reaching down to tap, and another one is a finger is coming up from the other side, and somehow they know this is Santa Man Mantos Manos, where the all the action has been taking place. Um, once again, just want to mention that this whole thing is bisexual lighting. However, um, as far as sexuality in this, it's just, as far as I can tell, it's just boy, girl. Um, nothing's ever been explained out. Some people might dress a little more towards one side, one gender or another. But, um, yeah, you know, it doesn't get in the way of this plot. Um, it's been pretty exciting. This, this issue, however, is very confusing because all of a sudden we've got this thing going on, which seems to be some kind of organization uh, is involved with this haunted house. In the meantime, we're back at Santa Manos and Amy is running through the video store. She sees the one ghost that she saw before was kind of deca partially decapitated. The mysterious clock she wants to take back to the house and she is being chased and threatened very violently by this VHS cassette demon <laughs> that all the tape came out and it formed a kind of a, a humanoid type shape, which is really pretty cool. So it's got this knife or some kind of dagger thing uh, attached and it's going to stab her. It's got it held down and she somehow is able to activate by touching the cassette something. I'm not sure what happens, but the tape breaks. And so, and she makes a transformation from Ghost back to her normal self, it looks like. And the tape itself kind of unwinds, it grabs, it goes all over the place. It's grabbing onto parking meters and whatnot. And it kind of recalibrates itself. It's pulling up all kinds of debris and whatnot. She's trying to get away. It seems to have somehow socked her and, and thrown her into her car. And uh, suddenly we go back to the house. Her friend Buzz, who was looking for her in this house, that you go in this house, no matter what room you're in, everything changes all the time. So you could be stuck in there for years and not be able to get out. So it's kind of a cool idea on that part. Um, but he's suddenly become very armored, and it looks quite a bit like the horseshoe head guy. who You don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy, but he has something to do with the house, they believe. He is old man James, because this is the James Mansion, and somehow he was had something to do with horses or horseshoes or luck or something. And uh, so he sends uh, Buzz off to help um, with Amy, who's being under attack by this strange VHS cassette demon. <laughs> and as he pops in, you can see he jumps in trying to stop Stop the guy who's got now like a parking meter wants to swat Amy with it. And uh, just in time, Buzz jumps in and he gets snared by all this videotape and whatnot. And he goes after it and you can see the, 
the video VHS tape spindles are now look like they're in a state of scared shockness from this this new uh, attacker. So you get all this wild, crazy drawing. Um, yeah, it's pretty adventurous art. I'm not sure it really told the story that well here. I'm a little bit lost, but this is a recommend. I've been reading the last, well, this is the fourth issue now, so I will continue. I think it ends at five or six, but it's been pretty good, this uh, mystery house. And, it, and the backdrop on this is its punk rock groups and them loving the music more than anything else and just trying to create a band. And they somehow they were looking for a place to play and they went to the haunted house and got stuck in it. And so the other rival punk band actually got killed. Um, and Amy is trying to uh, help the ghosts that are inside this house, basically. So it's it's been an interesting read. Of course, we get the image pages you all know that I hate with this tiny writing. I think there's two or three of these in here. And she gets a one-on-one -on -one with the uh, the horse head guy while her friend Buzz listens in the background. And just some weird stuff just keeps happening. Some of this group comes, and I believe this is the group from the opening page where you can see these guys back here. Um, and they've arrive to capture somebody but they're all able to escape no problem um except for uh, i think they catch buzz but he's not in his um, armor any longer he's just normal buzz so they really they really don't let on to a lot of new stuff here we get another one of those pages um amy's back in the house and she's still in her normal state and she wants to help these people, like, uh, free their spirits from the house. Suddenly the house starts attacking her, and she goes back into her ghost state. And um, the house is just all exploding all around her, and the guy's just saying, you can never leave. And you just see all this craziness happening. And then we end up with this spread here where she is kind of pinned in inside the house, and towards the middle and the whole house is just going wacky crazy and falling apart and she is sent to another dimension or something I'm not quite sure it's to be continued so we'll find out what happens next time but this was kind of a crazy issue it didn't make a whole lot of sense I read it twice and it was um still wasn't too clear Here's the issue for number five, next issue. Um, and we've got our friend back again, it looks like. Also an ad for Carmen. I did not pick that up. Gillum March is the writer on that one. And that's what we got. Take a look at the whole thing for you. It is a recommend. You have to read all the issues. You can't just pick it up at issue four. You'll be totally lost. Um, so you might want to wait for the trade if you haven't got on, in on it so far. I believe the reviews overall have been pretty positive on all the other channels that I've looked at. So um, if you're into punk rock, uh, haunted houses, supernatural, things like that, the first couple issues were pretty strong. Um, this one was just a little confusing. Um, yeah, I would, I would suggest this one. So thanks for stopping by and listening to my review. As always, please like, please subscribe, please leave comments, and we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. Once again, this is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.